Welcome, Rebels, to Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, a podcast based on the best-selling book series. On today's episode, we're getting ready for next season launching September 15th. It features women from our upcoming book, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World. Pre-order your copy now at rebelgirls.com, and we'll see you back here September 15th for brand new episodes of the podcast. Now, on with the show! When you look up at the night sky, what do you see? A few stars? Some shining a bit more brightly than others? An airplane with lights blinking across the dark sky? Sometimes we can even see planets, like Mars, in the form of a reddish-looking star. And when the moon is out, it can almost feel... magical. Right now, Sandra and the Stars, the story of Sandra Kaufman. Our night sky and our solar system are truly incredible. We can see stars that are trillions of miles away, or something closer, like the moon, just 239,000 miles away. And that leads me to our story. Once upon a time, there was a young girl who lived in Costa Rica. Her name is Sandra. During one warm summer evening, when Sandra was seven years old, she went over to a neighbor's house to watch the first moon landing on TV. The living room was completely packed with people watching closely, excited about the big event. And then, bouncing slowly on the surface of the very moon you see every night, the astronauts took their first steps. As Neil Armstrong's boot touched down on the dusty surface, everyone fell silent. No one had ever been on the moon before. But that night, history was made. As Sandra walked home afterward, she looked up at the dark sky to find the moon, shining so bright. It seemed very far away. But then, earlier, while watching on TV, she had seen someone right there, walking on the same moon she was looking at. And right then, she knew she wanted to be part of that adventure, up there in outer space. Not long after that evening, Sandra decided to tell her mother about her dream. Sandra's family was poor, and her mother raised the kids alone, working long hours at difficult jobs. But she always encouraged Sandra to follow her heart. She would tell Sandra, if you focus and study hard, you never know where opportunities can come from. Sandra knew her mother had struggled throughout her life, and that she wanted her children to be happy and succeed. And so Sandra decided she would not let anything stop her from going after her dreams, even when days were especially tough. Her mother's motto was to always move forward, and that, if you work hard enough, you can achieve whatever you want, even if it feels like shooting for the moon. From then on out, Sandra knew she wanted to grow up studying the moon, the stars, and outer space, all of it, by working at NASA. NASA, which stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration, is a part of the American government that's in charge of studying space. Sandra did work hard. During nights when her mother was working late, and Sandra had to help make dinner for the family, she still found a way to make sure she did all of her reading and her homework so she didn't fall behind in school. Sandra also had a very kind and supportive teacher who encouraged her students to take pride in everything they did, even down to the smallest detail. 
Sandra learned that doing her best on many small things in school paid off just as much as doing well on the big things. Some days, when things were hard at home, it wasn't easy for Sandra to focus on school. But she didn't give up. She continued to work hard at every opportunity she could, slowly building a path that was going to lead her straight to the stars. After she graduated high school, Sandra planned to attend the University of Costa Rica. She was excited to study electrical engineering, a program that focused on studying equipment, devices, and systems involving electrical functions. There were a lot of things about the program that could get her closer to her dream of working at NASA. But one day, a professor told Sandra that she couldn't study that program. He said, I'm sorry, Sandra, but women don't study electrical engineering. Women study industrial engineering. It's more ladylike. Sandra was crushed. Why couldn't she study something she was interested in? What did her gender have to do with it? The fact that women didn't typically study what Sandra was interested in made it hard for people to believe that Sandra could do it, even though she knew she was capable of doing the work. At that time, though, she felt like she must listen to the professor and took their advice anyway and went on to major in industrial engineering. But, as it happened, Sandra's journey to the stars wouldn't be stopped that easily. While Sandra was in college, her family ended up moving to the United States. A few years earlier, her mother had married a man who was from the U.S., and the family decided to move there. So Sandra left the University of Costa Rica, including the industrial engineering program. Maybe it was meant to be that she should follow her heart, she thought. After her family settled in the United States, Sandra searched for colleges to attend so she could continue her education. She didn't speak much English, aside for a little bit she learned in school back in Costa Rica but she was required to pass an English test in order to attend college in the U.S. But she passed and chose a college to apply to, George Mason University. This time, she pursued her passion and studied electrical engineering like she'd always wanted to. At first, college in the United States was difficult for Sandra because her teacher spoke English so quickly. It was hard to keep up with what they were saying, and sometimes she felt completely lost, struggling to try to catch up. She was definitely out of her comfort zone. Back in Costa Rica, she didn't have to worry about speaking a language she didn't know or living in a culture she wasn't that familiar with. And she couldn't just walk around the corner to see her friends. Everything was different in the United States. But here she was. So Sandra remembered what her mother told her. If you focus and study hard, you never know where opportunities will come from. So she did just that and made sure to take plenty of time at home to review everything carefully, including anything she might have missed in class because of the language barrier. She ended up befriending a few other international students at the college and that made her feel like part of a community. She felt better knowing there were other people, like her, who had made the United States their new home and who were learning how to live in a new place. After studying for a few years, Sandra finished all of her classes and graduated with two degrees, one in electrical engineering and one in physics. She was incredibly happy and proud of how hard she worked. And her family was proud, too. Sandra could feel herself getting closer to her goal. She got married and had a family of her own. But the stars kept calling. 
so she went back to school for a master's degree. This was even harder. As a mom, she wanted to spend time with her kids, but she also had to work, like her own mother had. But Sandra was determined to work for NASA, so she stayed positive, worked hard, and studied to earn her master's degree. As it happened, one day, Sandra went to a job fair. That's a place where people could look for jobs and companies could look for employees. Suddenly, she saw something. There was a company there that contracted for NASA. Sandra could just see that big blue circle in her mind, the futuristic red letters. She was overcome with excitement and went to have a conversation. She was nervous, but excited and confident because she had worked hard her entire life and this was finally her chance to reach for the moon that Neil Armstrong had walked on all those years ago. She did well on her interview and not long after, she was offered a job contracting for NASA. Sandra couldn't believe it. It was like a bunch of fireworks were going off in her mind with balloons and streamers and shooting stars. Sandra had achieved her childhood dream. While working for NASA in 1991, Sandra was just one out of only a handful of women working there as engineers. It was hard work, and Sandra knew that it wasn't just a fulfillment of her life's goals. By working there, she could set an example for other young girls who might have the same dreams that she did. And it might even be easier for those girls to believe they could do it when they saw Sandra doing it. Sandra thought about her experience. She'd grown up very poor. Her family even had to give up their house at one point. Her mom worked two or three jobs at a time just to make ends meet. And now, here she was. She had shot for the moon and stars, and she had made it. During her career at NASA, Sandra has worked on so many exciting projects, like the Hubble Space Telescope's first servicing mission, where a seven-member crew was sent to fix a lens on a powerful telescope that was launched into the Earth's orbit decades ago. One of her recent accomplishments has been working on the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Satellite, otherwise known as MAVEN. This was the first planetary mission for NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and the goal was to study the atmosphere around Mars, a rocky planet covered with iron oxide, which is what makes Mars look red. This mission took years of work, and finally, in September 2014, the satellite successfully entered orbit around Mars. An amazing accomplishment. And today... Sandra is the Deputy Division Director of the Earth Science Division in the Science Mission Directorate at NASA Headquarters. When reflecting on the Mars mission, Sandra thinks about how she got here, all the hard work and sacrifice. She thinks about that little girl back in 1969 in Costa Rica, watching a man land on the moon and coming up with a dream of her own. A dream of moon and stars, of planets and space. She never gave up on that dream. And then one day, it came true. The end. Thanks for listening. Let us know what you thought of this podcast. Send us an email at feedback at rebelgirls.com. That's feedback at rebelgirls.com. This podcast is based on the book series, Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was written by Caitlin Madrigal and proofread by Ariana Rosas, with sound design by Luis Miranda. Our executive producers are Katie Springer and Jess Wolf. Corinne Peterson is our production manager. Jennifer Ekman read you this story. Original theme music was composed and performed by Electra Bargacci. Until next time, stay tuned and stay rebel. <laughs>